See how it's doing that? That is a horribly loaded machine. They should have put it in with other items. I don't know why people think they only need to have a couple items in the dryer. Like, literally, that, that could have gone together, that could have gone together, maybe not that, but three of those could have combined into one. That? That's the sound of money. You wanna know what sound of money is? That's it. Ching, 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 ching. Ching, 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 ching. A few people point out, these bases are wood. They're two by sixes, they're two by six, and then they got two by six on the side and they have top pieces. That's how my dealer mounts Horizons. They get them about six inches off the floor, otherwise they're too low. You don't need to pour concrete for Horizon. Horizons are a soft mount machine, so they're not even really most of the time they just have a little screw in here, a deck screw holding it in. But I had the question the other day from a viewer. He said, what is that black stuff that's wrapped around the base of your two by six construction? This is a poly plastic uh, sheet that I get at Menards. It's quarter inch thick. It has a smooth side and it has a rough side. Now I face the rough side out because the smooth side, I seem to scratch it all the time and then it looks like garbage. And the rough side's a little duller, it's more of a satin finish, and the smooth side's more of a gloss finish. So you can flip it either way. All I do is I either use some type of uh, pole barn screws to dress it up, or you can use um, some pan head sheet metal screws that look fancy. And basically this is washable. So like right now you see there's some water stains and some soap stains. We clean this up every couple of weeks just scrub the hell out of it with an um, orbital scrubber and it looks like brand new again. I love it. I went to this a few years ago. My dealer used to wrap these bases in a, in a sheet metal and he would paint them black. They rusted out, the paint peeled. It was a horrible idea. Now if you just left it so it was stain, or a stainless look or a, a, a tin look, that would be good, but I wouldn't paint sheet metal. Sheet metal does not like paint and my dealer didn't quite understand that. So those look like garbage. And this, I don't have to worry about painting it. I just got to worry about cleaning it once in a while. And it won't rot. And it doesn't rust. And that's important in a laundromat because both those things will happen to about everything in here. Soap's corrosive. Water's not fun for everything. And you have hard water. So I just wanted to point out what that is. I just cut them into strips with a regular skill saw. That's all I do. It's a real simple product to use. You can wrap just about anything. In the future, now I inherited these from another laundromat. When they repoed this laundromat where I got this equipment from, real cheap, these bulkhead covers, this Formica, it's Formica is what it is, wrapped tops and ends came with it. Now in the future, I may use that, I may use that black plastic to wrap these in the future too. I wouldn't do the top because it's not thick enough, but I would do the front of this thing if it was over top of something. So it's a product I really like. This we've kind of gotten away from. And you can see the other islands coated that fun blue color too. At one time this laundromat was blue. At one time this laundromat was a blue color, a white color, and then you had the machine color of white and the stainless steel. We're changing it kind of to the gray palette with black and white involved, so. But that's to answer the question about that base thing. Just a real quick video, nothing big. That's what I use, super simple. Don't overthink some of the things you put in your laundromat because your customers won't overthink them either. One piece of advice I have for people, a lot of times people ask me, well, how do you know what to fix? How do you know what to repair? How do you know how to clean up things? I ask my customers. I'll actually take a survey throughout a couple months asking people, what would you like? And you know, sometimes they'll give you answers you would never think of. They'll say, I want more laundry carts, or it'd be nice if you had a sink. It would be nice if you had just a broom just in case. You know, you've heard that from the homeless people. That's not happening. But you'll get a lot of suggestions. I had one customer one time want me to leave a coffee pot in here. That ain't happening either. But carts was something I added. I added a few more, you know. Um, they will tell you things like, hey, your ceiling tiles are real dirty. I don't like that. I never noticed them. So then I cleaned them up. You can paint them, you can clean them up, you can buy new ones. Sometimes they'll tell you that it's kind of dingy in there and I'll say, well, what's dingy? Because dingy to you and dingy to me are two different things. And what's funny was they were looking at the floor and the floor was a white VCT tile floor and it looked dingy because the joints started to get dirty. Well, I changed the floor out. So 
That was something I didn't realize. I didn't realize that's why they thought it was dingy. And then sometimes they'll tell you, well, the paint, we used to have um, plastic on the walls here and it got really ugly looking. People hated that. So when we did the metal, people really loved that. You know, we put ceramic tile in the bathroom, people loved that. Those are all things that we learn from our customers. So ask, ask, and ask. Always be asking your customers, is there anything I can do better? Because you can always do something better. And that'll make them feel like they got a little bit of stake in the game. So then when they come to your laundry room, I'll be like, yeah, that guy really cares about what I think, you know? Just like I ask my customers whenever I'm in here, I say, hey, how's it going? Is everything working okay? You know, you need to make them feel like at home because they are paying you money. So you need to show them a level of courtesy, a level of respect, no matter what. And if they upset you, my best advice in what I do is, if they get really irate, I'll say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I can't, you know, whatever. I'll take down their information, say, hey, I'll tell the owner. Obviously, like you know in my videos in the past, I don't tell anybody I'm the owner because that doesn't usually work well. They usually go on a whole nother tangent of life. And so if I get a customer that's just really irate, I leave. I just leave. I just leave. I don't even worry about it. Sometimes people are just mad and you're not going to be able to solve it. But the majority of things, ask your customers. Just a piece of advice from me to you. Well, that's all the time we got today, folks. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate all subscribers. I appreciate you watching. Hope you got something out of it. I have fun making them. So, until next time, catch you later. Be safe. Take it easy.